So recently there's been some discourse on social media regarding the Diamond and Pearl remake leaks, and it's been a bit of a roller coaster as far as public perception of the game has been. I've always been skeptical of the quality of these games, but due to recent revelations regarding the game's post-game content and overall difficulty, I've decided I'll be buying the game. This is despite the fact that it has a lack of a competitive ladder, which is pretty much the only reason I actually still play Pokemon. I love the competitive scene, I've been playing it for over 5 years, and I'll be the first to call the game out on its faults, but recent development that has people up in a frenzy in the distribution of a level 1 Mew and Jirachi after the first gym in the game has me kind of confused. People has gone as far to say that the remake will be brain dead easy because of this. At face value, being handed a legendary Pokemon at the beginning of a game should make it very easy, right? Well this isn't really the case, especially when you're being handed a jack of all trades Pokemon like Mew and Jirachi. I'm all for letting everyone share their opinions on Pokemon games, especially when they make really anti-consumer design decisions, but in this case the argument falls less into the realm of opinion and more in the realm of ignorance on the game's core mechanics. Let me explain further, but before I do that, I'd like to ask you all to subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm a competitive Pokemon player who loves to use unusual Pokemon on my teams by finding a niche for them in the metagame. If that interests you, please stick around for my other vids. And I've been a bit inactive recently because I'm in my senior year of my physics degree and I want to finish that out, but I will have time to make more videos now that things are slowing down, so expect a lot more from me. Anyways, let's get into it. One of the main arguments against Mew and Jirachi is that you don't have to use them in your playthrough. While I agree with this sentiment as one of the main draws of Pokemon as a casual game is that you can use any Pokemon available to you on your team and even drop your starter and never use it again if you want to, I won't be using this argument. This is because some people see it as kind of a cop out and the game could hand you a level 1 Arceus from the beginning and you could still make that same argument that you could just box it. No. In this video, I'm just going to be talking about the logistics of actually using a Mew or Jirachi on your playthrough team. Let's start with the obvious. Both Mew and Jirachi when given to you after the first gym are at level 1. This means that if you want to effectively use them on your playthrough, you'll have to level them up to be on par with the rest of your Pokemon. You'll need to go out of your way to level them up to be around level 14-ish since that's when the rest of your team should be, and when I say go out of your way, I really mean you have to go out of your way. There's this hidden mechanic in the games called the growth rate of a Pokemon. Now this mechanic decides how much experience a Pokemon needs to level up. Both Jirachi and Mew are in the medium slow category, which as the name says is a below average growth rate. For comparison, the Chimchar line grows at about the same rate. Both Mew and Jirachi should be 13 levels behind the rest of your team, unless you take time to get them up to the same level. And it's not really convenient, but I won't act like you're not getting a decent Pokemon for doing it. Emphasis on decent though, and that's my second point. Being a competitive player, I've heard my fair share of less experienced players complaining that legendary Pokemon are overpowered or broken. But this is kind of a misconception. While on average legendary Pokemon tend to be more viable than their non-legendary counterparts, this isn't actually always the case. Pokemon like Articuno, Sovalli, and Guzzlord are legendary Pokemon that are considered mediocre if not outright awful. Mew and Jirachi are right in between these Pokemon and monsters like Rayquaza or Solgaleo. I guess a comparable power level to these would be something like a Gyarados, which no one is really complaining about having access to as soon as their Magikarp evolves at level 20. Mew and Jirachi have base 100 stats across the board, which might sound absolutely broken out of context, but can really only be considered average compared to other Pokemon. Honestly, the best part about them is their reliable bulk in the early game. That can't be denied, but we can actually use the showdown calculator to get an idea as to how hard they hit. We can see here that a Mew at level 15 has a stat spread of 59 HP and 39 at every other stat, if you somehow manage to get perfect IVs that is, and a Jirachi will have the exact same stats because they have identical base stats. A level 15 Monferno has comparable offense and speed, all of them at 33. While this is obviously a few points behind Mew, we have to take into account Mew's extremely limited learn set. Yes, Mew has the ability to learn every TM in the game, but at this point your options will be limited to low power moves like Rock Smash. This is the same power as the only other offensive move Mew gets at this point being Pound. Their low power mixed with the fact that they don't get the same type attack bonus means that Mew isn't actually able to hit as hard as your Monferno that you have on your team. As you can see here, Mew is only able to deal 21-26% to HP to this level 15 typeless Growlithe with Pound or Rock Smash, and an Ember from your Monferno will deal 30-37% to HP. Offensively, at the early game, Mew is actually outclassed and is only viable because of its bulk, which makes it eat hits pretty well against equally leveled Pokemon, which isn't typically the case as many trainers will have higher level Pokemon than you throughout your playthrough. 
A level 18 Stunky can easily two-shot Mew with Bite. Now this isn't atypical, but it just goes to prove that Mew is about on par with other Pokemon at this point in the game. Looking at Jirachi, it can actually be quite a bit stronger than Mew since it gets access to a Psychic move in Confusion immediately at level 1. At level 15, it will deal 39-47% to 47 to our Typeless Growlithe, which is a 3-shot. Nothing incredible, but it is quite a bit better than Mew. What I've shown you so far should prove that in the early game, which is where the power gap between Mythicals and the rest of your team should be at its highest, it really isn't there. The gap actually gets smaller and smaller as you play through these games because you gain access to higher level, higher stat Pokemon. So let's continue our experiment with Mew and Jirachi at level 50, and a level 50 Infernape instead of our Monferno. Updating these Pokemon's learn sets to reflect what you might expect to have at level 50, we'll be comparing the damage output. Stat-wise, both Mew and Jirachi at level 50 have 175 HP and 120 in every other stat. Our Infernape now outclasses these Pokemon offensively as it has 128 and 124 in its speed and attack stats respectively. Here at the end game is where you want your strongest Pokemon, as you'll be needing them to take on the Elite Four and Champion. While Mew does have access to any TM in the game, its strongest move it can reliably click is Psychic, since it's a 90 base power Psychic attack with no drawbacks. Upgrading our Typeless Growlithe to a Typeless Arcanine at level 50, we can now see that Mew's Psychic deals 36-44%. to Jirachi's Meteor Mash, its strongest move at this point in the game, will deal 36-44% to as well. And Infernape, with its Flamethrower, will deal 38-46%. to In the endgame, Jirachi and Mew can be considered average strength Pokemon that have reliable bulk in coverage options. At no point in this game though, are these Pokemon actually able to out damage the rest of your team by a significant amount, if at all. Now I wanted to make this really quick video just to stop the spread of misinformation regarding these Pokemon. I'm one of the first who will call out Pokemon games when they make bad design decisions, but this definitely isn't one and it rubbed me the wrong way when people were talking about how broken Jirachi and Mew are, because it really isn't true. But with that, I just want to thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think about these Pokemon in my comment section down below, and leave a like if you enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Hey guys, just, just like a little thing to throw on the end here, I completely forgot to talk about it while I was, you know, originally writing the script and making this video. Jirachi has access to Serene Grace and is known for its flinching strategies uh, with Iron Head. It doesn't seem to have access to Iron Head in this game as Meteor Mash is its, you know, best uh, steel type move, but it does have access to Zen Headbutt, which can flinch. However, it does have, uh, it, it does have accuracy issues. And on top of that, Jirachi won't be able to ri reliably outspeed anything in the game unless you happen to get a Jolly Nature and pretty much perfect speed IVs. So, um, yeah, and it also doesn't learn Zen Headbutt until later on in the game, like level 28. So by the time it does actually get it, it won't really be too much of like a a broken thing you can probably like flinch out pokemon that are smaller or that are slower than you uh but for the most part it's it's really not actually anything to write home about so yeah just want to throw that in there